And good evening. Welcome to the Jackson Christian Eagle Show from Hub City Deli. Get excited. Put those hands together and clap because sitting with me at the table is the head man himself all the way from Arkansas, but he's a Jacksonian now. Uh, Coach Darby Palmer and Mr. Excitement, B.B. Brian Bullard, who will be helping with basketball. But you know what's more important right now? We got a big region game this Friday night, gentlemen. Welcome to the show, and I know you all are excited. These guys have been working hard. I've just been sitting around watching TV and film today. <laughs> Coach, you're you're fired up today. I, I love it. I'm uh, ready, Coach. Put me in. Coach. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, we gotta we gotta pace ourselves now. It's just Tuesday. Uh, we're excited to be here tonight. Um, got a great show uh, lined up, and, and going to highlight another one of our programs that we're very proud of um, at, at, here at, at Jackson Christian, and talk to a couple of our players. Um, but first, Coach Palmer, um, go on the road and travel to Memphis, which is always a, a, you know a task in itself. Um, and, and handle a, a solid FACS team, and, and what did you see from our guys that you were pleased with? Yeah, absolutely. Going on the road, especially any road game, you want to take what you work and practice and apply it, and I thought our guys did a really good job coming off of our bye week, uh, being able to go up-tempo, uh, do some different things uh, that we worked on in the bye week, I think paid off really well. Not necessarily the start that we wanted. We started off a little flat, but we were able to respond, and, and Jack Collins – responded in our next play mentality that we preach all the time and he was able to get a pick in the end zone uh to get us going he really i uh, coach i got a buddy in on this absolutely one. i thought it lit a fire <clears throat> under us I, I could even from where i was had my binocular i looked down there and, and there was literal fire coming out of the kids eyes when we went on defense didn't think the other team had a chance to score and they didn't and we took it to them with a vengeance Yes, sir, we did. You know, it took us uh, that play, I think, to light a spark, like you said. Uh, but I'm very proud of Jack and our defense for stepping up. And, you know, plays earlier in the year, Jack would have got down on himself. But Jack's maturing and growing and becoming a really good player for us. And, and he's learning how to respond and next play mentality, and he did that. So one of the challenges that FACS presents for teams is they, they do some different stuff offensively week to week. Um, and we worked under center most of the week uh, just – in, pre in preparation for that's what we were going to see. They come out in the spread, and, and what was our – our defense was able to respond, and, and what do you attribute that to? Absolutely, and not only the spread, but they came out with an H-back set, and they tried to spread us out and get our force player out of the box, and we did a really good job um, going back to the basics and our fundamentals and different checks that we use from week in to week out, and they were able to – you know, they had some plays on us. Uh, they hit us with the speed option a couple times and really outflanked us, but our guys responded, and we were able to make some checks on the sidelines and, and to overcome it. Absolutely. Coach, um, offensively, uh, got a couple things here we can, we can talk about. Cam Boyd, nine rushes, 133 yards and a touchdown. Um, and then added um, on the screen pass, 72-yard uh, uh, touchdown. What does that say about Cam as a guy that um, we've been trying to get his hands going in practice and, and he's been working at it um, and, and it paid off for him in that game? Well, he's turning into an all-purpose back, an all-down back, and he can, he can catch passes out of the backfield and he does it every day in practice. And, and that's nothing new that we haven't seen him do in practice. Uh, but being able to execute it uh, in the game and having big plays like that right now, the past four out of five games, our offense has only been able, on average, around 23 plays yeah. a game. And that's, that's just with great execution. Um, and, you know, defensive stats are going to be skewed a little bit because opponents are having 60 to 70 snaps a game just because we're having one or two play drives. Yeah. Uh, but our offense is doing a great job executing um, at a high level. Yeah. We got a um, note here that he's, he's 19 yards away. Um, from, from breaking that record, and, and we're excited about that, but we're also excited about um, how much our offensive line is, is growing and, and such a huge part of that and um, just exciting time for Cam, but also exciting time for our team and keeping that focus and, and all those things. We have Jay Mosley, uh, two rushes for 96 yards and a touchdown, um, and Elijah, again, five rushes, 51 yards and two touchdowns, and just solid. You know, Daniel, Daniel Green catches a touchdown. Um, then almost a, a second one there. Um, talk about spreading the ball around and, and what kind of challenges that could present to teams down the road. Yeah, absolutely. I think you saw last Friday of all the answers that our offense has. When different people want to load the box or different people want to become the force player, we're able to have certain tags that gets other guys open. Um, and we were able to execute 
that. And you, the three or four guys you mentioned right there are pretty electric when they touch the ball. Daniel Green has done a great job blocking all year for us, and I was really happy. Uh, like we were yeah. talking, you know, pre-show of him being able to get another yeah. touchdown. Should should have had two. His his torso was across the line. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was. Uh, if you go back and listen to the film, I kind of mm-hmm. questioned that one a little bit, Coach. I'm gonna add to that. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, every starting wide out, tight end, H back, whatever you want to call our different positions, because we're we move people around. Everybody caught at least one pass. Cooper Banky had a big catch. Roland had mm-hmm. one, and I thought that. Austin Kelly came on after Gage had an outstanding performance. Austin came on through some good passes, too. Well, Austin Kelly is a very, very good quarterback. Uh, We have another really good quarterback waiting in the wings, and we're excited about what Austin brings to the table, not only right now, but he's also competing with Gage day in and day out for that job and and making Gage better in practice. So he does a great job. Of course, the Swiss Army knife, he's taking Walker Ray's place as the Swiss Army knife. Elijah DeMoss – he does everything but mix the Gatorade, and he probably could do that if he wanted to. Absolutely, and he's a, he's a really good change of pace. You know, going in with, with Cam as a one-two punch, but also being able to put him in uh, certain situations, short yardage, red zone, uh, at a quarterback, and he does a great job executing. Absolutely, and we've seen him in JV games play quarterback. He can run the Wildcat, but it's not a true Wildcat because don't give that young man a chance to throw the football either. Uh, he, uh, he can throw it. And our offensive line, I see improvement each week and kind of jumping ahead from a great thing. FACS is in the win column. We've got one of our toughest opponents. You know, you and and Coach Butler, both great coaches, arch rivals, two schools are arch rivals. Players know each other and all that. And this is usually a knockdown, drag out game. And the Two lines, our offensive and defensive line, will have to play a very important part this week. Absolutely. And like you said, Coach Butler does an outstanding job with his team. We know when we face his team, we know that there are certain things that they're going to do offensively uh, that they hang their hat on that they've done for years, and there are certain things defensively that they hang their hat on and they execute at a high level. Um, But one thing that we always preach, probably, what, every Thursday we remind them, we have to do our job better than the team does theirs, and we have to play harder. If we do those two things and we execute, uh, it's a good night for the Eagles. And so that's been our message all week is just being us and playing up to our standard. Consistency will be important. Everybody do their 111th. That's and right. And I love that phrase, and that's what it's going to take because they're going to do theirs. Jumping backwards a little bit, <clears throat> we handled – the uh, 3-3 set, but it looked that he gave us all kinds of looks, Coach McDaniel did last mm-hmm. week. We handle that, but we get it again, and maybe more looks can come out of them because Blake's dad influences <laughs> his defensive schemes, and you never knew where the Pittsburgh Steelers were coming from, and Blake has adopted his dad's philosophy about that. Absolutely. They've lined up in a 3-4 set. They've lined <laughs> up in a 5-2 set, and then some games they've gone to a four-man look. So, uh, we know that there's going to be multiple sets, multiple looks, multiple blitz packages that they're going to try to throw at us. Um, but it, once again, it's up to us to execute and our rules based and, and having our guys execute at a high level. Well, you know, our, our young men are smarter than the broadcaster is because I had to go and dig my only four <laughs> defenses charts, but look how many defenses are inside of it. That's and, right. Uh, Coach McDaniel find a, found a way to add one I don't have on here. And I thought I had it all covered. And uh, our task this time, folks, you want to watch the game close because you never know where somebody's coming from. But hats off, I'm proud of our lines. Yeah. Absolutely. And especially our offensive line, they're playing, they're playing as, a, as a whole, as a one, and that's what you want. You want them to mesh together, especially this time of year. And Coach Bull and, and Coach Gillum do a great job with our defensive line, and we feel like they can have a big night this Friday. So we, we, you mentioned something about – um, being prepared, and, and every time that, that we face uh, TCA, they they throw a little wrinkle at us, and and you can't. It's hard to know what what other other teams are going to change up and do, but um, that's the, been the the solid thing about our offensive line is I think you could line up all five or however many defensive players on one side of the field, and they'd figure out a way to block it. Uh, they they don't get rattled, and and it's just a solid group, and they're together. Um, they love playing for each other, and they love blocking for those backs, and um, we're excited about the opportunity. Well, the line calls seem to have improved, and that's key that those linemen and, – and, folks, 
though they just don't line up and look and say, "Oh, I got to block this guy tomorrow." No, you got the guys that are head up on you, inside eye, outside eye gaps. Um, people, they're gonna you know run cross stunts, twist. And they have to communicate and they have to make a pre-snap read just like mm-hmm. the backs do. Yep. Absolutely, and Coach Riker does a great job with different drills that we do each and every day with our everyday drills of teaching the rules base and within our offense and allowing <laughs> them to execute no matter what people line up with your charts right there yeah. in front of us. <laughs> this is a good chart for me. It helped me through a lot of football. What's the food of the week for the football team? Now, there's one. They didn't know that one was coming. Well, there's got to be something that's hot for the we, team. We didn't know it was coming, but it's pretty easy. Yeah, uh, it's pretty Because the guy to my left here – is is a creature of habit and that's right. so I, that's my area of expertise there so we we do chick-fil-a on fridays and i saw grant in here uh grant edwards earlier the the owner there at chick-fil-a and they take care of us and um we get a little chicken sandwich some chicken nuggets and um we're ready to roll so that that'll be what we're eating on friday and the kids like it and um, it's what we've done for a couple of years, so that, that's nothing special. But there you go. There's take your care some of insight. You yeah. got it from Coach Bull. About 30 seconds, quick final statement, gentlemen. No, I was really pleased with how we went down to FACS and executed it. Once again, we've already hit on that they can throw a lot at you offensively uh, with different mm-hmm. sets and everything that they do, and especially defensively with bringing pressure from all over. Uh, we're excited about the opportunity uh, that we have this Friday night at TCA, uh, but, it's, but it's up to us to go own the moment and make the most of that opportunity. And I feel like our guys are putting in a solid week of practice to make that happen. Absolutely. Folks, one of the most exciting teams around here. Great coaching staff, good Christian values. Uh, we're going to be back with more after this time out from Hub City Deli. But don't turn it dial. Call five more people and tell them there's more to learn on the Jackson Christian Eagle Show. Let's take that time out, Gary. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And Coach Brian Bullard here with Coach Joe Holloway. We're on the Jackson Christian Eagle Show. The featured sandwich of the week here at Hub City Deli is the Godfather. And speaking of the Godfather, (laughs) I'm going to call this gentleman the football father, Nathan Nash, former superstar at Jackson Christian. But he is now Tacker, Tristan, and Max's dad. He has fallen to second place in the Nash house, maybe third place (laughs) because his wife, is better looking than he is. I'm falling fast. She's a, she's a nice <laughs> young lady. Of course, his mom, one of the best people around here, too, and always enjoy talking to Miss Pam, seeing her. Don't get to see enough of her because she's in the stands and I'm up high, but uh, what a job she does. But, Coach, I'm going to turn it over to you because this one's like my own son in some ways, and I probably say too many nice things about him. Appreciate it, Coach. We uh, hi, you know, Last week we highlighted our middle school program and their season. Um, and so this week we wanted to focus again on one of our smaller – or not smaller, but younger teams. Um, and so we have Coach Nathan Nash with us tonight. And Coach Nash has been um, a part of our fourth, fifth, and sixth grade for how long, Coach? Uh, this is my ninth year this year. So ninth year. Uh, he and, and we'll, you'll hear from Lee Johnson, uh, Coach Johnson, here in, in just a few minutes. But, Coach, we wanted to bring you guys on. We, we didn't do this last year. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that we were recognizing those guys and, and recognizing uh, you and the staff and the, and the time and the, the effort that y'all put in. Um, and and you, you more so, we talked a little bit earlier from a defensive perspective. Talk about um, that defense this year. Talk about some of the numbers that, that we put up as a defense and, and just hit on some of the high points. Sure, absolutely. <clears throat> well, um, this year we had a very good year on defense. We had um, – I think it was four games or maybe five games in a row where we where we pitched shutouts. Um, we had um, a lot of kids that were coming back from last year's football team. Uh, we had some younger guys that were able to step up and, and also give us some reps this year. Um, 
I think that we gave up uh, six points to USJ, six points to Trinity, and uh, that's in that's in four games yeah. uh, this year that yeah. we that we were able to compete out there, and uh, we we really were able to shut down most of the teams that we played. Um, we really we, our our kids learned a lot um, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. You could really see the growth in the kids. Um, everybody knows exactly what they're supposed to do every play. Um, it's it's always been fun, and that's the reason that I, I'm able to give my time to the program and, uh, and try to make sure that we are putting a product together uh, for the middle school program, and then they can turn around and, and they can give you guys in the high school program um, the same the same look that we're trying to do. And, um, you know, the, these kids, are they're hungry to win. Uh, they love to come out. And they love to compete. And um, I'll take our kids over any kids in the city of Jackson. Absolutely. Coach, tremendous words. Talk about I, – I, just from my perspective of, of seeing the home games, um, this team got after people. And they they laid the wood to people. And, and talk about – is that something that, that we have to – that you had to coach into them? Or was this a group of guys that are just aggressive and hungry – and getting after the ball every play. I think it's probably a little bit of both, Coach. We um, we start early on. As soon as we're able to go full contact, we do. Um, the kids that we have out there, we start um, – we have fourth graders that come out and participate in our program. And so we get them a little bit earlier on than some of the schools do. Right. And uh, we're able to to even take those fourth graders and, and have them learning how to do form tackling. Um, and making sure that we've got good technique. Um, and if we can start building on them in the fourth grade, when they roll through to the fifth grade and to the sixth grade, then they're, they're really out there having fun, and they understand that it doesn't hurt to come up and make contact, um, wrapping up, taking them to the ground. Uh, that's, that's really the, the thing that we preach the most to our kids is uh, technique, technique, mm. technique. Absolutely. Talk about maybe a couple guys that I don't want you to, to – try to name everybody, but just talk about a couple of guys maybe that stood out um, to you, maybe a defensive lineman and a linebacker and a secondary guy. Just kind of break that down a little bit for us. Okay. Well, we had um, we had a returning player this year, uh, Lane, and I can't come up with Archibald. this. Archibald. Archibald, mm-hmm. yes. Uh, Lane gave us a lot of snaps last year on the D-line. Um, Lane played defensive end for us this year on the D-line, and – um, you know, you could you could just see um, that he had been in the program. Mm. He loved to come up. He loves to hit people. Good, solid tackler. Um, at the linebacker level, we had Waylon. I think Graham mm-hmm. is Waylon's last name. Um, Waylon will come up and rock your world. I mean, he 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 fears nobody. It doesn't yeah. matter how big that guy is. Waylon's going to come up and he's going to smack him in the mouth. Um, In the secondary, we had uh, Carson. Mm -hmm. Um, Carson was a a good corner player for us, made a lot of solid tackles, um, defended some passes. I think he had two picks on the year, um, and he's a fifth grader. Carson's Carson's coming back as a sixth grader next year, so we're excited about that as well. So what do you – and we've got a couple minutes left. What do you look forward to – and you pass these guys on, and that's part of, of being at that at that level. Um, and, and you pass these guys on. What what can our middle school? What can Coach Wyatt, um, Coach Ray, Coach Lumley expect out of these young defensive guys next year as, when they get them as seventh graders? Well, I hope that they're able to show those coaches in middle school what they've shown us, in that they know how to come up and they know how to make form tackles. Um, they're 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 really uh, they're great at, at reading the play, the flow of the play, following the flow of the play, and gang tackling. We we really had a lot of gang Absolutely. tackling this year, um, which is, at this age it's crucial because you, sometimes you're going to come up and you're going to be a hundred pound kid trying to tackle a hundred eighty pound yep. kid. So it's really crucial that they all fly to the ball, and I think that they'll be looking forward to getting some of that next year. Absolutely, coach. Um, and I've, I've kind of – Oh, it's okay. You <laughs> handled that well. I'm going bit. to ask Gary if we can borrow 30 or 45 seconds. There you seconds go. Off Absolutely. But Nathan, we always give people a chance to make a final statement. Plus, how does it feel to be coaching at your old school? You know, it's fun. Um, it's it's fun. I still see there's there's some teachers that are there that were there when I was at Jackson Christian School, and uh, they, they weren't on the coaching staffs that I played on, but – it's still just fun to be able to, to look up in the stands and see some of those people that were 
mentors and teachers when I was in school there, and they're there rooting on my kids mm -hmm. playing for JCS. So it's a really great experience. It is a great experience. And I'm going to take some words out of his mouth because he would never do this. There's another young man on that team who also did a pretty outstanding interview, Max Nash. But, Max, you better get that homework, son, because <laughs> academics come first at Jackson Christian. Yes, sir. That's exactly yeah, correct. Absolutely. Coach, anything before we take the break? I just want Coach Nash to, to know and, and to express our appreciation as a high school staff. This program is vital, and if, if yes. we don't invest in it, if we don't have great guys and leaders and mentors – keeping guys excited about football and, and teaching those techniques and things like that, it, it puts us behind. And he, he, he and Coach Johnson do a tremendous job. And, Nathan, thank you for coming on tonight. and Thank you for what you do and hopefully continue to do. I know you're, he'll be moving up here soon, but hopefully continue to do and be around our, our program. We appreciate it. Yes, Part sir. Of the program, Thanks, man. Coach. I got Gary. I have destroyed <laughs> Gary's schedule. He's such a great guy. He's gonna, uh, But anyway – Got a text, wants to know, what number did you wear when you played at Jackson Christian School? I, wear, I wore number 30. You wore 30. He was a running back uh, because I know people are thinking, and the person that sent this, and it's not Bill either that sent it, Tacker's 58, Tristan's wearing 76. Now, for varsity, we don't know. Uh, Max is a little far away from knowing what his varsity number is going to be. And he was a running back and a linebacker. And correct me if I'm wrong about the linebacker. That's part. correct, yes. He was one of those unlicensed chiropractors <laughs> like his oldest. But anyway, we've had a good time with him. We're going to get back on schedule. Gary will take away my pay tonight as a penalty for that. <laughs> but anyway, we are here at Hub City Deli. You can also get the Beckham. That's the brisket with the cheese on it. Oh, just ask them for it. It may not be on the board, but it's there. The Godfather sandwich. And you've just heard the football father. And we're going to take a time out on the Jackson Christian Eagles show. We'll be back with more. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And we are back here at Hub City Deli where the Jackson Christian Eagles show is. We've already had one Great guest, Nathan Nash, and it just keeps getting better. Lee Johnson is here, the man that never has a bad year. And Coach Darby Palmer would tell you he doesn't have a bad year because he keeps sending those good football players up the line. Coach Bullard's here to talk with you. Coach, I'm all, you did such a good job. You get to handle it again, and I get to sit here and drink on my Coca-Cola. Well, there you go. Coach, we just heard from, from Nathan Nash and – um, from a defensive perspective and also from an alumni that, that played football at Jackson Christian. And sitting to my left here is the, is the head coach and the guy that, that runs our program, um, Mr. Lee Johnson. Coach, thank you for being with us tonight and, and just talk a little bit um, about your team, what you, were, what you were happy with, maybe some questions that got answered as the year went on, some, some really positives from – some good positives from this year. Yeah, last year we had a really young, young team uh, you know, we were we were predominantly fourth graders last year. In fact, 65% of our team last year was fourth graders. And so we, we kind of took our lumps last year. But this year, those guys came in and, you know, really played strong. Uh, fifth graders, sixth graders. We had we even had some fourth graders. Yeah, it's, it's got to go up there. It's okay. not omnidirectional. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Is that better? Yeah, go. much better. All right. <clears throat> Gary's happy again. Okay. See, he's got my paycheck, so I have to keep Gary happy. I got gotcha. you. So, but no, we were we were super impressed with how our young guys played, you know, because last year having so many fourth graders, we were kind of concerned what that was going to look like this year. But they stepped up, and uh, we give them that opportunity every year to step up, and they do. So, so Coach, trying to do as much, um, make our offense as similar, similar as we can from – from fifth grade to seven, you know, sixth grade, seventh grade, and up, and it's not going to be the same. But what did you see from some of those skill guys this year um, that that you were pleased with? Toughness, you know, you know, being able to run in the hole, uh, you know, blocking, you know, assignments, doing what they were asked to do. That was a big part of that. Um, 
you know, we we're we're gonna we're suffering some. We're losing some players this year. Uh, you know, Waylon Waylon Graham. You know, mm -hmm. he's been he's been he played our quarterback spot last year, but he was our main running back this year. So we're losing him to the seventh grade. But you know, he's he's a tough kid. You know, fast kid, strong kid, and you know our receivers did well this year. Uh, you know, they stepped up and uh, really did a you know a great job for us. And obviously Carson, uh, you know our quarterback. You know, he's a fifth grader, and He's uh, he's special. He really is, and I think we saw that this year. Uh, you know, he's a he's a dual threat. He can run it, he can throw it, uh, and he's got speed. And so, but no, as far as our guys, I mean, they just all did really really well. Our uh, line, we had great line play. This that's year. what I was going to ask. Those guys yeah. up front seem to really enjoy getting after people on the yep. defensive side and the offensive side. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we had a we had depth this year, which we haven't had in the past, and so it was nice to be able to sub some guys in and out. Uh, we have a lot of fifth graders on our line, and that's uh, that's good for the future. Uh, and so we're we're excited about that. Obviously, Max Nash, uh, you know Nathan's son, and uh, we've had really good. I tell you, another kid that was just fantastic this year was Lane Lane Archibald. Mm -hmm. You know, he was just, uh, you know, he came into uh, camp this year. He was uh, he was a foot taller, mm -hmm. and uh, so he was our center last year. But we put him in some skill spots this year, and. Uh, He's going to be a player. Uh, he's going to really be a player for you guys by the time he gets to high school. Absolutely, so, and he, yeah. he was mentioned on defense as well. Yep. Coach Nash mentioned him. Yep. Lee, talk to us a little bit about how long you've been doing this and, and a little bit about the history with you and our elementary program. This is the eighth year, I think, that I've been coaching. Uh, when my son Jack was in fourth grade, I started helping. Bobby was the uh, – Hearn was yep. the, the head coach and uh, just helped uh, for two or three years. And then uh, I took over, I guess, five years ago. And uh, it's been a great, great thing. I mean, it's been uh, – I love it. Uh, I'm passionate about it, and uh, we want to keep trying to make it better each year. We want to make it fun for the kids. Yeah. And, you know, we really we really talk about repetition. And, you know, we start running plays the first day of practice. Yeah. And, you know, we, we just kind of – we keep it simple, uh, but we keep it fun. And uh, we want them to have fun. And we want them to not – we want them to play on. We want them to play in middle school and high school. And, you know, it's funny, we've seen kind of that – that skip sometimes they don't play in middle school but yep. they'll come back in high school so i'm happy to see some of those boys i work the chains a lot on friday nights and so it doesn't make it makes nathan and i super happy to see those guys out there so absolutely watch them grow and you you know you had a daughter that's graduated you have a senior right now you have a sophomore right now and then you have a, a young daughter in the elv where my yep. my daughter is why do you and you answered this a little bit so all that equals you don't have anybody on the team that, that is your own. So you just answered this, but hit on this again. Why why do you keep um, going out there every every year and running that program for us? Well, I love it. I love what the results are. You know, I, I told Darby when years ago that when I started all this that, you know, it's our job to basically mimic what you guys are doing at a smaller level to keep providing you quality players that know the system. And our kids, uh, they know the system. Uh, by the time they get to middle school and high school, they should be able to run the plays. And I just love the kids. It's uh, it's fun. Absolutely, and, uh, love watching them grow. Yeah. So. And, and we're not under center. You're you're snapping the ball. You're running motion. You're you're doing a lot of things that yeah. um, if you turn on our games on Friday nights that, that we're trying to do. And, and so that that is a huge help, Coach. It is. Well, I was just going to say people need to come out. Not only watch, and I'm bad about sitting in the east end zone when I come to an elementary game. Yep. Bill and I do, and and watch all the kids and stuff. But Lee, you have a good time. Talk talk about how it feels to be the head coach. And you usually have that good smile, even when something goes wrong. And, and you're encouraging, and you're teaching, coach. Just talk about that a little bit. Well, I want to give credit to our coaches. I mean, we have a lot of guys that step up and help us. You know, Ryan Scott and uh, Weemon Graham. You know, he's been with us now for three years, and we're going to miss him. Obviously, Nathan and I've been together doing this for a long time, and so it's fun to have that you know camaraderie there. And you know, there's a comfort level there. You know, and Obviously, we had Josh this year and Clark, and we had several folks to help us. And so, but uh, I love it, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, you know, at this age, it's still pure. You know, it it's uh, it's it's fun, and you know, you know, I'll give you an example. This year in the JV game, uh, Jude, uh, and I'm not giving last names out, but Jude on our team, you know, he's a JCS kid. Um, you know, he made some plays this year, and there at the very end of the season, you can see in their eyes that they can do it. You know, they don't think they can do it until they hit someone or they make a play or they make the catch or whatever it is. But, 
you know, we had a really, really good season. And so I'm, I'm excited about what the future holds for us. I really am. Absolutely. A so. quick final statement. Yep. We have that tradition here before we take a break. Hey, it's uh, it's great. Come out and watch us next year. Uh, we en we enjoy it, and uh, it's uh, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's fulfilling. So. It is, and y'all play a very tough schedule. Two of the opponents are opponents we have during the regular season for right. sure. Actually, three of them when Fayette Academy is in, and Humboldt was uh, loaded with speed. They always are. Yep. Thought y'all did a great job. Lee, appreciate it, Thank and you guys. Uh, keep the good work up. You can't beat it. Hub City Deli, and they got desserts. I have my eye on one. I'm hoping they hold it for me. But people have been buying them. It's down to just one of them up there. They got the Beckham, as I told you about earlier. And, you know, that's that's named for Blake Beckham, and he's the one that created it. It's a great sandwich, but they got a ton of other stuff. We're going to take a time out, and when we come back, more. It even gets better after this on the Jackson Christian Eagles show. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. You're back in Hub City Deli with the Jackson Christian Eagles show. It gets better and better. And, of course, the pretty guy here is Coach Brian Bullard. <laughs> I'm the ugly guy here. And the superstar is with us right now, the man with the sticky fingers in the FACS game. And uh, Jack Collins, who last year I saw him chase down a mini of baseball. But we playing with the oblong ball. Coach Bullard, it's yours. Coach, uh, we just talked to um, two of our – our tremendous elementary coaches, and, and we're so thankful. I want to hit again on that before we talk to Jack. We're so thankful for those guys and that staff and what they mean to um, our program, and, and that's something that Jack came up through uh, playing, and you think your dad coached in that. Yes, sir. Um, and, and so it, it all goes together. They start there. Um, actually, now you can start in kindergarten with the flag. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to put it all together, K through 12. Yeah, your son's playing. Yes, sir. Flag. We We have a first-grade team. Um, the JCS has second grade team, third grade team, and so we we're just trying to get people. We're in the South; people love football, yes. and so we're we're trying to give it to them at a young age and and learn all those things, coach. But moving on to our players and uh, one of our starting corners here with us tonight, Jack Collins, uh, going over his line a little bit from FACS: three tackles, two assists, and the big interception that um, you know we talked about and, and Coach Palmer hit on. Jack, thank you for being with us tonight. Talk about um, game started a little rocky, um, and, and you know they, they that's a tough kick, tough one to handle. You don't know, do I go up, do I stay back on it? Took a weird bounce, um, but you were able to move on and and talk about that play where when you were in coverage and what you saw and, and how you were able to make that play. Um, well, I just I love playing corner, and from the start I've always loved it and I've enjoyed it because when I'm playing baseball. And when I'm playing football, it's always I'm reading the quarterback. I'm reading where the ball is going to go. I'm trying to see, like, who's the quarterback looking at and who has the best shot of him throwing it to it. So when I was dropping back, uh, as soon as I dropped back, I kept my eye on the corner on the wide receiver who was inside. And I made sure I kept my hips and I was focused on the quarterback's eyes and which way his head was looking and where he was trying to look like he was favoring where he wanted to throw the ball. And when I was dropping back, I looked up. And I saw him look directly at me and my wide receiver. And when he, like, loaded back to throw the ball, that's when my adrenaline started pumping. I was like, oh, yeah, here we go. I'm fixing to get a shot here. And so when he tucked up through the ball, I got hyped up, and I saw it, and I just went up. And I jumped too early in you the did. play. I was going to say, you yes, jumped sir. a little early. I was a little too excited for that one. I should have waited back a little more. But uh, at the end, I still got the job done. I was just excited because I got to say thanks to the line, too, because I think the D-line and all the guys rushing the quarterback did a fantastic job because they put pressure on him and they pressured him to go out and make the pass early. And so by him throwing it like that, I was able to cut in front of the wide receiver and make the play and pull it in and get us in good position to start the next drive. Absolutely. And that's a that's a big thing, Jack. And, you know, start off the game and they take, take a little wind out of ourselves, but then we go get the ball right back. Um, talk about this defense and, and – 
your role and, and kind of what your job is. We know you play corner, but um, t- talk about your role and your strengths and what you bring to our defense. Um, I'm not a team captain, but I still look at myself as kind of a leader because um, I like to help out with tr- like my fellow corner Trent and uh, our other players. Like in practice, I'm constantly screaming out like, hey, in, 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 or like heads up, and like I'm trying to tell them, hey, watch the run, stuff like that. So I feel like um, my job is to contain like every other corner, but I feel like I still need to be a great leader and help others. And like I just love it out there, and it's just an awesome atmosphere. The team's great. Defense does a great job. I mean, we're not perfect by all means. We always have room to work and to grow, but I feel like we have a really good thing going right now, and I feel like we have a great foundation to build off of. That's a great answer, Jack. Coach, I was going to ask Jack, from the start of the season, the whole defense, but Jack Collins has really improved, hasn't he? Um, the whole defense has improved tremendously, like greatly. And uh, I feel like I've improved a little bit as well. Yes, you have. And um, it's just the coaching's been great. They've told, like, I've seen what I did wrong in film. I've asked them what I could do to fix it, and they've been there to help me. Yeah. And it's just I've enjoyed it, and I've enjoyed the coaches. Like, they make it fun to learn and fun to get better and, and just to be a better athlete. Jack told you the truth, but I'm going to add something to it. I come to practice when I can, and I've seen things, so I'm back in the summer. Jack, you work hard. Jack's very modest. He wouldn't tell you that. Jack works at his craft and has perfected it, just like in baseball. I love it when you hear the the uh, ping of the bat rather than the crack of the bat because wooden bats crack, metal bats make weird sounds. But Jack is off and running with the same thing here, and he's applied some of his baseball skills. And, uh, Jack, is it more fun to play offense or defense? Because now you are a wide out, and he is very capable of catching the football as a wide out. Um, I feel like I like defense more personally because I just love being aggressive and I love being the aggressor, and I love just making hits, making tackles, and picking a ball off. But I love offense as well because, like, it's just – you can run out there and make touchdowns and just impress others and like you have your brother's backs on the line when you're blocking but when I'm playing defense it's just there's a lot more stress on me don't get me wrong but it's just a lot more fun to be out there with like on the defense and just see the ball coming at you and be able to jump up and pick it off on top of somebody or through their hands and it's just nothing beats that let let me do this coach and then I'm gonna let you end it but yes, sir. rapid fire one or two word answers if you could do three that's okay um Favorite sports memory at Jackson Christian? Favorite sports memory is definitely uh, after games with Coach Bull when he gets us all hyped up inside the huddle. Like, you just can't beat that. It's awesome. Favorite class and teacher? Favorite class is probably – that's a tough one. Uh, I can't – I don't really have a favorite class. I love them all. I have, love all my teachers, Coach, uh, Coach Wyatt, Coach Riker, and Miss Baker. Top three. That's mm-hmm. the way to do it. Politician. Here. There you go. And favorite food? Favorite food? Um – I'm a big fruit guy, so I got to go with like watermelon and stuff like that. I just love fruit. And of course, favorite Bible verse. Favorite Bible verse, Philippians 4:13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. Coach, Jack, tremendous job uh, last week, and but we got a job to do. We got to move on and, and try to go one another this week. Thank you for being with us tonight. And as as we close, um, we we give our guests you know a couple a couple seconds to talk to. The fans, the community, your parents, whatever whatever you want to do, just just close this out here. I just want to tell everybody out there is like who's like going through doubt or something like that. Like maybe you're not starting now, and maybe your coaches are like kind of like looking over you and stuff. Just keep pushing and keep working hard because in the end it all pays off. Like in practice, I go 110 percent, and I feel like that's got me to a lot of great positions and great. Uh, opportunities in order to proceed and go on to the next level and I feel like if you just keep trying and give 110% effort you're not going they can't overlook you for long if you just give it all you got absolutely coach and we are here at Hub City Deli we appreciate Jack and I'll see you in baseball too and we forgot to ask him about the, the baseball but there's time for that maybe he can come up for a post game interview because he is a star in baseball too and I bet he could run track also if he if he wanted to he's pretty quick But we have got to take a time out. Beef brisket, Hub City Burger. I have had that before. Coach and I both have had the brisket. Coach is eating a lot of sandwiches. Can't go wrong. And they have breakfast down here, too, Monday through Friday. Want to get down here to Hub City Deli. You're listening and watching the Jackson Christian Eagles show. And we want you to stay tuned because we have got another young man. And I'm going to talk to him when I get my shot at him about special teams last year. I'm actually going to go back to last year. Okay. Let's take that time out on the Hub City 
show with the Jackson Christian Eagle Show is the base. Pub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's Brisket Hoagie with Brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And we are back at Hub City Deli, home of the best deli sandwiches in town. You need to get down here and do that. Better than that, and I told you I was going to go backwards a little bit. Coach Bull's going to come back into the present. But last year, the young man sitting across from me, Trent Carrier, made a name for himself on the broadcast <laughs> covering kicks and stuff. Uh, he was like a hired assassin, <laughs> and he busted up some pretty good kickoff returns. And he, uh, Coach Ross, my old coach, used to use a term called mollyhock. Mm -hmm. He mollyhocked a couple of those runners and stuff last year. And I just want you to know that you are fixing to hear from Mr. Excitement, but he's doing more than covering kicks and stuff this year. He's playing some serious defense. Coach Bullard? Coach, before we start that, I just want you to know that you've said another word that I have never heard in my life. Mollyhocked? I, I look forward to that every week. That's a, I love that term. Uh, but we have our other corner uh, opposite, opposite Jack Collins with us tonight, uh, Trent Carrier, and is doing a tremendous job for us. Trent, correct me if I'm wrong, um, mostly special teams, but, but you worked as, at strong safety uh, last year a little bit, outside backer. Outside backer. Outside backer. I've never played backer, yeah. safety or So you, you were working at Will Backer last year. Yes, sir. And, and this year, um, coming into the, the season, you know, we lose a couple corners, uh, some guys move on, graduate. And, you know, coach comes to you and, and, you know, is is this position that you think you can help us at? And, Trent, what, how did that how did that work out for you? Um, I just said, yes, sir. I was excited to be on the field, and I love playing defense, so wherever they name me. Absolutely. And, and I like – what I like about Trent is, is he has that linebacker mentality and he's not afraid to come up and hit. Um, and, and neither one of these guys are. Uh, but Trent's super physical. Um, talk about uh, FACS a little bit and, and some of the challenges that uh, we had to prepare for and what you saw on the field. So FACS runs a pretty odd offense. Um, they do a lot of different formations that are I've never really seen before, so just preparing for looks that I've never seen before is what we had to do. What is your, as a corner, what is your – your favorite uh, favorite thing to do? Do you like going back on a on a go route? Do you like coming up and and hitting in the flats? What what is your ideal situation if you could pick it as a corner? My favorite is when they throw a screen and I can come up and pop them. The super physical, Trent. Um, what was the what was the learning process for you? Go from a guy that's playing a weak side linebacker that that fills fills holes and, and plugs gaps and things like that to a guy that has to. You, we want you to be aggressive, but you have to be aggressive towards the pass first. What, what was the transition like for that and the learning curve? Um, coverage and, like, staying deep first, being a pass first threat as opposed to just coming up right off the snap. Um, and just the whole coverage aspect, I've never had to do that before. But it's fun. Did you have to put in extra agility stuff, extra speed stuff? What, what did that look like for you this, past, this um, summer? Yes, sir, I did. Uh, Coach Irv in the off season does a lot of work with us, and that was very helpful for my agility. So this was your this your junior year. This yes, was your first year um, without your brother. And, and how has that been for you, uh, good or bad? Or you miss him, you wish he was still playing with you? It gets a little lonely at the house. <laughs> um, I do miss him being on the team with me. It's fun. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm one of the older guys now, so – Time runs its course. Absolutely. Coach? Coach, well, let's go to some hit and run stuff, as I call it, or quick answers. First of all, I usually ask another question first. What other sports do you play and what are your hobbies? Because there, there's some people out there. I've been prepped on my own about questions to ask you. So I play tennis and I run track, and I enjoy doing pretty much anything outdoors. And tennis is fun, and I knew you yes, ran sir. track, but – I didn't know, but you like playing tennis is what I, I was told. Ah, did you see that smile? <laughs> well, folks, I hope uh, we caught it on camera. That is a winning smile. Now, what about favorite food? 
A good rack of ribs is hard to beat. Oh, man, this, I like this young man <laughs> even more. And you heard my intro of him. Favorite math, uh, math class. Favorite class and teacher. I'd say math is my favorite class, and I love Miss Baker. The, you know, we hear Miss Baker's name a whole lot. We got a lot of great teachers, but I need to go back and take some math, I think. <laughs> and um, I had math on my mind. What's your favorite Jackson Christian football moment? It was last year, so my sophomore year after game, we had one, and Coach Bull comes up, and he's like, I just got one thing. And we thought he was going to critique us or say something we did wrong, and he just said, like, let's go. And we all started jumping up and down. It was awesome. The uh, memories that you have are great, but uh, – uh, I got to ask you about one. You were a younger player. We've got a lot of the older guys, and now you are an older guy. A couple of years ago on that field goal where we beat USJ, and, and I didn't bring that up while ago, and I meant to with Jack. Uh, you were, what, a freshman? When yes, that sir. Happened? Yeah. yes, sir. How did it feel as a freshman? And now that you're a junior leader, it's even better, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, it really is. Okay, corner. What, do you do anything offensively? Um, I play X receiver, so outside okay. receiver. An X receiver. I like I like outside. Now your brother played tight end a little yes, bit, yeah, and, and was a really good guy. Mm -hmm. And your favorite Bible verse? Um, I like Psalm nineteen fourteen. Uh, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing unto you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Absolutely, at Jackson Christian School. We're family, aren't we? And that's a fun thing, the way we handle everything. Yeah, I love it, Coach Bull and them. Coach, you got a couple more technical questions for him? Yeah, I asked Jack this question, and so I'll I'll ask you as well. Um, what is your – if you had to describe – somebody said, what does Trent Carrier bring to this 2022 Eagles defense? What, what do you bring? What are your strengths um, on this defense? I'd say my strengths are – I mean, I'd say I'm a good tackler. Um – so I feel like having that at corner is something you need to have. Um. Absolutely. And yeah. and we have um, – we're not overlooking anybody or anything. Uh, a couple games left. What do you want to um, – what would you say uh, to the program, to the people that watch, the community, your parents, um, grandparents, what, what, what would you like to say as we sign off with you tonight? Y'all have been great all year coming out and supporting us and – Crosstown game at Trinity, so come out and support. Absolutely. Great job. I love this young man. Uh, he caught my eye last year because people that will hit like he did, and he made some really fine tackles that if he doesn't make them, then boy, Zach has to try to pull them <laughs> down, and, and we got to protect Zach's leg a little bit. We've got younger kickers coming on, but there's only one Zach Cisco, and so uh, Trent did a good job of that, but forget about protecting you did a great job as special teams. This young man, I think if we ask him to line up and play nose tackle, he would line <laughs> up and play nose tackle. That's how I feel about him. Trent, thank you for being yes, on. Sir, thank you. Hopefully we'll talk some more and uh, keep the tennis balls flying too. Because yes, that's a fun sport, and he's good at it. People get out and support your Jackson Christian Eagles and Lady Eagles. They play all the sports. We've got a volleyball team now. The tennis team deserves the support. And we've got some pretty good tennis players, too. Soccer team is always good and going to give you trouble. Our golf team was super this year, and we are at a super restaurant, Hub City <laughs> Deli. And I was just looking down. I couldn't even read all of them. they got more sandwiches than Jimmy Carter has peanuts. We're going to take a time out. When we come back, Coach Buller and I are going to wrap this show up, tell you some information you need to know. Let's take that time out on the Jackson Christian Eagle show from Hub City Deli. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian.
the growing in popularity Jackson Christian Eagle Show is on every Tuesday night from 7 to 8 here at the Hub City Deli where they have all those craft sandwiches, the wraps, the salads, the soup of the day, and they also have those desserts, which Coach has got to hold me back from. <laughs> I'm going to Molly Hawk a sandwich after <laughs> the game. That's our new word, and there you if go. you listen, we've got slobber knockers and white knucklers and all kinds of good things like that. And uh, the uh, John Madden used some of those terms. He didn't use Molly Hawk, but uh, Mr. Fan, Terry Oman, and, and Richard Ross gave me some of those, and then Dan Bland brought, uh, had him tap Coach Bland's vocabulary. <laughs> The man sitting across from me, Darby Palmer and the other coaches, have the same kind of effect. They teach these young men the right way. They give them some fun. They discipline them when they have to. They're stern. And Coach, uh, the discipline you all teach and the football you all teach, we're going to have to use it all because we play a tough team this week. Yeah, and, and Coach Palmer hit on it earlier, and we like to start with it and then end with it. Um, you know, it's any time you play your rival in a school that's close and um, – some really good battles over the years and you, you never know what's going to happen and, and we have to come out and, and execute and and do our jobs and they're going to present some challenges on offense they're going to throw the ball down the field they're going to throw a lot of screens they've got a young running back that's that's solid and has gotten better out the, throughout the year their quarterback is a, is young and he's progressed throughout the year so you watch them on film and uh, there's a lot to prepare for and and a lot to um we have to stay disciplined. Our defensive line has to, to be able to understand when a screen is coming and, and not keep rushing upfield and uh, retrace and, and help on the screens. And, um, you know, first thing we like to do is, as a defense is, is try to stop the run um, and force them into long yard situations. And, and hopefully we can do that again this week. Absolutely. And I, I want to bring up their quarterback. It always helps to be a coach's son yep. and a quarterback because – You've been around it from the time you've toddled with a diaper on, and you hear your dad talk, you learn about it, you watch film with him. Because back then, when you're still in the diapers and coming up to the first grade, your son, he follows every word. He lives on every word that yeah. comes out of your mouth. And it, it makes a difference. So uh, the young Butler will be a very – he is a very good young quarterback. We've got to have a lot of hurries. We've got to put the quarterback on his back we got to block and tackle what it really boils down to, right, Coach? Yep, and, and take care of the football um, and and do our jobs and uh, prepare and, and, you know, have a good Monday where it's more of a – I wouldn't call it quite a walkthrough, but it's more of a learning day. Uh, you progress into Tuesday and, and a big work day for us, and then Wednesday you, you, you sure it up, and then Thursday you put it all together. And so – um, you know, once Wednesday hits, you kind of feel like you're there. You, you feel like you're in your middle of the week, and um, you get start getting that excitement. The chill in the air has been awesome. Really good football weather. Um, we're we're excited uh, for the challenges that that we're going to have. This is a a team that that's going to present some some big challenges in a, in a playoff type game, playoff type atmosphere. Um, we hope to have a big crowd there and, and support these guys. Well, I'm not trying to put any pressure on anybody, but this game basically is for second place, yeah. which is a very important position because second place in our region gets a really good draw in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we never put the, the cart before the horse, but um, it, you know if you do wrap up that two seed, then uh, I think you might get two home games out of the deal, um, and, and that's always good to be able to play at home. Um, but it, none of that matters if, if we don't take care of business. And, and we're not adding any of that, add that pressure to these guys. They, they know what's at stake. They know who's uh, across from them. But, you know, the, the moment has gotten big for us a couple times this year. Uh, but for the most part, these guys have stayed in that moment um, and embraced the opportunity. And, you know, when you're dealing with 15 through 18-year-olds, you never know what's going to happen. But if we prepare and we practice hard, and we go out and we do what we're supposed to do. Hopefully the, the scoreboard takes care of itself. A lot of films have been watched, a lot of effort, a lot of practice drills have gone in. The coaches have coached. The players are going to play. Hopefully the officials will officiate. And I'm, <laughs> I'm half teasing on that and half reminding you fans out there, if the, you let the coaches coach and the players play and you allow the officials to officiate, these men – that officiate, uh, they do their best, and they don't get the kind of pay they get. But, Coach, what time do we play? And I would say, even though TCA has nice parking, probably need to get there early. Yeah, we 7 o'clock, um, we got an email 
Um, they do tickets through GoFan, so you can purchase mobile tickets. Uh, also, they do cash at the gate, um, and you know it. We are we're excited and for for another big opportunity, and um, we we're. We're, we're playing uh, – our plan is to, to do what we do and, and to get the ball to our guys in space and continue to build on using Daniel Green over the middle and using keep using Cooper Banky over the middle and um, just continue to get better. And, uh, you know, Gage was, was very efficient the other night, I think uh, four or five passing maybe, um, and, and three touchdowns I think is what he ended up with. And uh, he's doing a good job there for us, running the offense and um, – you know, we're taking care of – for the most part, we had the one special teams miscue early, but um, our special teams has been solid, and, and that's all three aspects of the game, all three phases of the game, you have to take care of business. And so – You know, I think it tested our medal, and we showed what our medal is, but I really saw that fire, and I liked it. There was fire in our kids. Uh, and There was no way. FACS had the really good running back, Pennington, mm-hmm. uh, think that their quarterback situation is solid for them they're an improving team but we took charge and whipped them yeah and and you wonder you know how guys are going to respond with adversity and so maybe you know that was meant to happen with a little bit of adversity early backs against the walls on the defense and uh, we talked to Jack tonight and he goes out and makes a play um, and gets the ball back for us but um, you know we're we're excited for Friday and, and just going back to our earlier in the show uh, those two men that were here with us, Nathan Nash and Lee Johnson, um, you couldn't ask for a better group of guys to lead that that elementary program, and um, and it's fun to just be around that and watch those guys play and watch see how excited they are. But then on Friday nights, it's awesome to see those guys turn around and sit in the stands and and watch our team play, and and it all goes together. And, and we talk about family, um, and, and we don't just throw it around. Um, and family's messy and and ugly sometimes and not everything's perfect um, but you can always come back to it and, and that's what we have and and that's what we're trying to build uh, we actually had uh, and you know these guys Charles uh, Sims and, and uh, Brandon Bennett came today to school um, and they were visiting with Coach Palmer came to the office and, and talked with us a little bit went to Miss Baker's room uh, those two guys graduated, Charles the year before, Brandon last year. Nice, yeah. And and seeing those guys come back, walk through that door today, um, that's what makes this worth it. And that's what that's what we do this for. Um, yeah, we want to win. Uh, and and we, we every time that scoreboard's on, we want to win. But seeing those guys come back and visit and talk with us and Brandon's working and, and Charles is working and in school, um, just doing really good things with their life. And that's the most important thing. Absolutely. People remember this team that won't be beat can't be beat if you don't play to win why light up the scoreboard if we play to win every time we've got fine young men that are becoming better young men and the two coaches we had are a builder of extremely young men into the next That's level right. and i like that coach final statement as always um, enjoyed being here tonight at hub city we are thankful for them. They, they host us. They get us a table. Uh, they, they help our, our players out with a meal and provide that for them. And um, just an exciting time for Jackson Christian football as the year's uh, coming to a close. We want everybody to come out Friday, uh, be loud, and, and support these, these guys as, as we continue this journey together, uh, this team. And, and we hope that on Friday we're ready to play and we put a good product on the field. Absolutely. You can be part of one of the great electrifying programs in the state of Tennessee, the Jackson Christian School Eagles. Get out and support them in all sports. But right now, let's throw our support behind our football team, our school, and show up big. Watch the broadcast. The pregame will start at 6.30 on the Jackson Christian Facebook. Be there or be square. Mm -hmm. Either be in the stands or be on the screen. We will wrap this up from Hub City Deli. Don't forget the great sandwiches. want to thank Gary Lockhart who is a great human being besides being a wonderful Thanks, producer. Gary. And also, Brian Buller, Darby Palmer, all of our special guests. Don't forget the Beckham sandwich, too. Uh, I'm and he's here tonight. He's, he's here he tonight. He brought the family He to will eat. autograph your sandwich for you. That's right. Paul Schulte, <laughs> our executive director, is here. But we're going to tell you that this is a copyright broadcast, and any rebroadcast, retransmission, or further use of this contest are – show without the express and note the word expressed written consent of worthy road studios is prohibited for coach brian bullard coach darby palmer and the whole jackson christian family thanks for your time this time till next time good night all